field because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes he rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. And now the Browns' defensive unit trots back out. They go play action here on first down. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. He lost four there, and it's third down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't t touchdown, Houston. A big play there with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Texans turn that interception into a touchdown. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. But it was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. Now a handoff here to his running back. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Third and 11, five in the secondary now. Nickel look. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. It's caught inside the 25. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big bodied receiver, his 21st touchdown of the season. And the Browns add six to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. The try here for the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. 
And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And he breaks it all the way out to the 38-yard line. Great return. And now out comes Houston. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't score board watch. Everyone does it to some extent, but you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it, because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Finding time. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. The Texans' defense, we watch them get set to go. They are down on the scoreboard. They're just trying to keep the opposition now at bay. Let's treat it a little bit like tennis. Hold serve. Don't give up anything. Win the point, so to speak, and move on from there. Did you play tennis? I actually did for a little while. Were you wasn't any very, good? Wasn't very good no. at it. Yeah. But I tell you what, the kids, they both let it. <laughs> Your kids. Thanks. And he lost the football. And his guys are going to get the football. 23-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Now, that was a good job by the defense swarming to the football. And you know it's no cinch that you're going to be able to get the ball into the end zone against them. They're number two against the run. So what's an offensive coordinator to do? Check your playlist. And on the ground they go with a running back. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. 
Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Partner, that's another short run there, and I think the easy thing is to look at them right now and say, let's get away from them entirely. Let's start throwing the football, but I don't think you ever entirely abandon the run. It helps set a tone for the game for you, keeps your offensive linemen feeling good about themselves, and it actually tamps down a defense's pressure because if you just throw it all the time, it's going to tee off with the pass rush. And his kick is right there. It's good, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So he splits the uprights there, and I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it. So the lead is now dwindled to nine as the kick here is away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. Yeah, let me puff out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. Come on, let's go! Come on, Out of the gun now on third down. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That's taken it around the 40 on the punt and the Texans with great field position to start this drive as they take over first and ten and now out comes Houston and they had three points last time but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown we'll see if they can do better now I'm with you on that one let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing the only one happy about the three point the kicker exactly you put it through the post that's going to help him at contract time but that offense they're thinking let's get in the end zone this time I don't know if that helped him at contract time you, you could have kicked that one through I don't know about that toe bash I don't know about toe that bash, yeah. super toe <laughs> They'll run it now, out of the gun. Working his way for a gain of seven to the 26. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there, about to break a big one. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And again, this time to the tailback. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he 
He's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. And the offense needs seven out of this play on third down. He'll drop to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight ahead pursuit. A great read and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage loss. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown Houston. Their dangerous wide receiver. His third touchdown of the game. His eighth on the year. And the Texans draw a bit closer. It's been quite the game for him individually. A trio of touchdown catches now. So pick a route, any route, whatever you want him to run, he's going to do it and do it well and end up in the end zone. This has really been fun to watch. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And the lead is down to two. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Now a handoff here to his running back. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. One quarter remains here as the regular season starts to wind down. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's been a good one so far. Just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. And they'll go on the ground. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one, maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. The defense in an enviable position here. The offense needs 13 yards. It's third down. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And that pickup of a first down, 
that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. They come up in an offset eye. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's able to work free for about six down to the 18. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with a lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. They come out here in the eye. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. And this time they go underneath for a simple pitch and catch. And not only do you get the pitch and catch, Brandon, but you're able to keep the receiver moving when you hit him with the drag route. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. That's caught at the two. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic, so anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even add a little extra in the end with a short run. And he'll give it here to his running back. And this will result in him losing yardage back to the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. They come out here in the eye. Offense working with a second and goal now from the three. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the game, 17th on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. Not only touchdown number two for him, but a big run to boot. However, still trailing. Still trailing, but not because of his efforts. Boy, he's playing really well, and I love his long speed there, right? Able to get out there and burst all the way to the end zone. And smart enough 
to keep the ball in his hands and get into the end zone for the touchdown. In, in 2016, on all levels of football, we're seeing guys drop it before the goal line. What's the rule, Brandon? Run into the goal, to the goal post, post. That's right. before you, you drop the ball. That. There you go. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the... And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. The sack recorded. It's a loss of five, and now it's second down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Under pressure, and they got to him again. They'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. So, Brandon, we've sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. So a big sack on second down. Now let's see what the offense has in store for third. All right, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. They're going to look to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. He's at the 30. Touchdown, Houston. A big play there. 87 yards. And the Texans have cut it to within a score. And let's count them up now. One, two, three, four touchdown receptions for him in this game. And just one shy of the NFL record. What a great performance. Going up and catching the football, creating space, and finding the end zone. That's what it's all about. Now the try here for the point after. And the lead is down to two. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and the result, a Houston touchdown. Out is the Texans' kick team as they'll send this one away. This will be taken about the 12. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. 20. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great play there with his third touchdown and 18th on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question about it. And you talk about on his back. He's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, he's got him in the lead. And he knocks it through. Well, I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score, but it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. 
This will be taken in at the one. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, give up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Here we go now. Boom, landed. Ah. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. He'll look to throw, surveying the field, and down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. And while he did a good job of sliding around in the pocket, there was nowhere to go with the football, so he had to take off and try and run. He just got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. Third down and three. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Green, 39! Green, 39! They'll give it to him right up the gut. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Back to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. A great effort there. His second TD of the game and 18th of the year. And the Texans draw a bit closer. Well, let the natural light of today reflect that he has now gotten into the end zone two times. Look at you. You're a little uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, is that his name? No, I was just going with the meteorologist. Said it was a day game. I'm here. Extra point forthcoming. And the lead is down to two. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. Then it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now the Browns offense trots back onto the field. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time jaunt. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, 
the play action pass could very well be open. So this brings up a second and two. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Now they try the right side here. Now, that, now the Texans are going to stop it as they signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Third down and four. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And now the Texans want to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now a handoff here to his running back. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain, and it's second down. All right, so the timeout over, and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he loses the football a second time. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. We get a glance at the Browns' defense as they file into position. And everything's going to rest on this drive. Can they keep them out of field goal range because a field goal would win it? So now you're in that position of you can't just back off and give them easy throws. At the same time, you don't want to press them so hard they go over the top and beat you deep. So you're playing a tight defense with an idea that you have the lead, whatever you do, don't let them in the field goal range and give that up. So maybe tight, but not too tight. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect, right? It's kind of like lacing up your shoes. Get it exactly right and no more. See if they lace them right. They're less than two minutes to go in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. One of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? It's like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. Oh, they practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Holding offense. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yard situations, they often become bolder. He'll look to throw. He's got time. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. He couldn't get rid of it. He 
takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. And he clocks it with just over 30 seconds left. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. He's back to throw. And he dropped it. Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. You gotta give some credit there. Able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Back to throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And his guys are gonna get the football at the 28-yard line. And that one, oh, it's going to hurt big time. You're in the two-minute drill, trying to get your guys down the field, and it's looking like they're going to go up just short, as this is definitely not his best throw. And it'll wind up being intercepted. And the Browns offense back out there, ready to take over. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So, kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it. It's what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. They will take the knee here, and they will finish this regular season with a victory. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Browns, a final win means they will finish off the regular season at a very strong 12-4. And, and they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Texans, they wanted desperately to finish at 500, but that won't happen as it'll be a 7-9 season in the end. And they'll get the extra week to think about this one as they return to action in two weeks' time. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.